I was a little nervous going into the theater to watch this movie because I hold the first Spider-Verse movie in such high regard that I consider it to be a masterpiece, essentially. It's most definitely one of the best superhero movies of all time, and I consider it to be, just overall, one of the greatest movies ever. And it doesn't even matter compared to other animated films or live action films, nothing matters here. It's a fantastic, solid film that will hold up against pretty much everything. And it's influenced me in so many ways that I just can't be more grateful to the movie at large. I mean, the first movie movie awakened me to shoe game and it made me buy my first pair of Jordans. It's a movie that I love a lot and I'm proud to say that this movie is a welcomed addition to the Spider-Verse franchise. They did good here. Hi guys, I'm Bayfond and I don't really know where to start when talking about this film. It nailed the things that I wanted it to do perfectly. It follows up really well as a sequel, able to capture a lot of that same magic that you get for the first time around. In this movie, we cut back to Miles a year and a few months after the events of the first Spider-Verse movie, and well, where he's at. Dealing with a lot of family issues, a lot of loneliness, and overall, we just get to see this kid and how his life is just holding up after all those things. And as you've seen it in the trailer, a character called The Spot comes in and he starts causing a little bit of chaos. That's what you expect to see in the movie, along with the fact that you're gonna get a whole metric fuck ton of Spider-Man. There's a shit ton of them in this movie. Some standouts are Peter B. Parker, 2099, Spider-Punk, I'll get to Spider-Punk, and Gwen, because there is a lot of Gwen, and that is a damn good deal. It feels great coming back to this entire world that they've got here because it looks gorgeous. It's stellar animation that goes on here. The animation is something that is very special in this film because it always changes and morphs depending on the situation, the setting of where everything's taking place. Some of these universes are gonna have that cell shaded look like Miles' world, evoking those feelings like you're looking right into a comic book. But then we also catch glimpses of some other ones that look like watercolors are just being splashed on a page and they look stunning. Or a whole world that's kind of more of a collage than anything else, something that makes your eyes just wander because you don't know exactly what's going on on a picture. Creativity is overflowing in this movie in every single department. And when I say that the animation is special, it's also special in the regard that this is a big leap forward in terms of how the characters move and how they're interacting with their own worlds. You can definitely feel that it's been a few years since the last Spider-Verse movie because the animation has most definitely improved. I can really say that that emotional voice acting is really helped out by how the characters are able to really express themselves in a way that is more complete, more full than maybe how it used to be. The performances just felt alive and very electric. The visuals overall are probably the best part of the movie because your eyes are just gonna be feasting on all of the beautiful things that are gonna be on the frame. And it brings me to talk about every single frame because every frame can practically be a movie poster you can hang up on your wall. It's something that you can just stare at for hours and hours. There is a lot of care that is put into this. And you can really see that it's important for the creators to really like show you the sensations of the world around them so that they can really like push the story from here. A story which surprisingly isn't gonna be all up in your face. You're not gonna have nonstop web slinging action from the start to the end of the film. Cause in the beginning of the film, there's a large chunk that just focuses on Miles and his family. This is where the emotional core, this is where the heart of the film is. Being Spider-Man isn't as easy as Miles expected it, and it's really affecting everyone around them. But after that large chunk of what is essentially character building, that's when we get thrown into that whole multiverse situation, you know? The big action sequences that you're probably all hoping for. And of course, they look fantastic. They are absolutely dazzling. And the events that lead up to these big sequences are really kind of deep as well. And when we look at the characters, we pretty much already know about Miles since the first movie. So it focuses on everyone else a lot more too. Gwen has an exceptionally big part in this movie because we learn a lot more about her story, where she's coming from in particular, and what her state of mind kind of like sits at. And they're all great, but my favorite Spider-Man in this by far is probably Hobie Brown, you know, Spider-Punk. I'm almost certain that everyone that's gonna walk out of watching this movie is gonna see him as like the MVP because he is just fucking goaded, he's fantastic. And I'm hyped to see a lot more of this guy. But there are a lot of Spider-Man, like a lot, a lot. The trailers do not lie because I'm pretty sure in every shot that we get in that whole multiversal lobby is a Spider-Man that you've probably read before or Spider-Man that's probably been seen somewhere, someplace 
out there in the big world. And that brings me to references galore. I say this because there's a lot of references done in this movie, but they're done tastefully. They're not using him as a crutch to just kind of like support a failing, sad, boring story. Not at all. If anything, these references and cameos just add a little bit more spice, a little bit of what everyone wants to see. I know I enjoyed it and I know the audience enjoyed it too because goddamn, everyone was clapping at those scenes. You can just feel the big vibes coming from everyone in that room there. There was so much momentum in the film and a lot of things that were just going on that when it ended, you just wanted to see so much more. You wanted to see the rest of it. This movie ends on a pretty clear cut cliffhanger. And it makes my heart sink because we're gonna have to wait a while for the third movie. It's gonna be pretty fucking badass when that comes out. I guess you could say that this entire film was probably just set up and that probably gets me a little bit more hyped up overall because that means that the next one is gonna be all payoff. If we take Infinity War and Endgame into consideration, I've always been an Endgame fan myself, so good news. The only reason that I'm gonna say that this movie isn't better than the first is because it didn't make me feel that same way. The first Spider-Verse movie had me in the palm of its fucking hand. It was the first time that I saw a movie give me the emotions that that film did. For all of us, it was the first time seeing a movie done as faithfully, done as comic book accurate, done as comic book aesthetic as this. It was just something that was completely out of left field, and it left us just thinking that this was amazing. Watching the first Spider-Verse is an event that I think I will never be able to forget because I just think that it's so special. So I can't put this movie on top of that one. And that leads me to the next part of this video where I wanna talk about spoilers because there's so many things that went on in this film that I just wanna talk about overall. It's just fantastic. Like for starters, Prowler Miles is Jordan's. I'm gonna need a, at least three pairs of those. Jordan ones in black and purple. They look gorgeous, they look stylish. I need them right fucking now. So I'm expecting that collab to drop uh, sometimes in the next few months or so. And when talking about this, I think it was a fucking bold decision to end the movie where they did. Having Miles confront Prowler Miles, something that I definitely did not expect to see in this film. There were a lot of things that I actually didn't expect to see in this film, like actually portraying the Spider-Man as being kind of stupid and kind of evil. <laughs> They've all pretty much accepted their fates at this point, but I think they could kind of do better. I mean, come on, don't give up so early. They're goddamn Spider-Man. But you know, for the story, it fits. It's in the context of everything. Miles is gonna be the one to break this goddamn cycle. And even though he did create one of the biggest problems that the entire multiverse is facing, and that's Spot. Because honestly, I did think that Spot was kind of a dumb, stupid, guy in the beginning of the movie, I thought he was like, oh, it's a little bit annoying for this guy to be considered to be such a big villain until the event happens where he harnesses all of that energy from the collider and he becomes the actual spot where he actually becomes menacing and scary and shows Miles the future. Excellent decision to see his progression as a character. I still think the spot is a reasonable enough guy to talk down from being a villain because his only motivation is that he's kind of got disfigured into this faceless body, but we have to see how it really goes down from here. I was really surprised too that the movie actually started out with Gwen and that we saw so much more of her and I was thrilled by that fact. Her world is one that I would absolutely love to live in. Her universe with that watercolor world and characters that change colors depending on mood and stuff like that, it looked gorgeous. I adore that aesthetic. But her relationship with her dad and the similarity to Miles' relationship with his dad is Honestly, something that I thought was very good storytelling. This is common ground, and this is a reason why Miles and Gwen understand each other better than she can probably say anyone else can understand her. They have a very, very similar situation. I like that. You could feel that there was like some chemistry and some actual reason for the characters to act in the way that they are acting. And I especially liked how in the end, in the resolution of Gwen's story with her dad, he leaves the force. I honestly think that this might be hint dropping for what's gonna happen in Beyond the Spider-Verse, but again, who knows here? I will say though, the topics of predestination and fate are definitely things that I always like to see in media. So that made me a bit more biased to how this story was playing out. I think it's a real deep topic that's got some actual meat on it. So I'd like to see their interpretation of how they're gonna handle things here. But I don't think that they're just gonna give themselves up to just absolutely accepting fate and just taking it on the chin. I think there has to be some sort of hope there. In terms of looking at the references, there were so many, and I'm just gonna name off and talk about the ones that I can really remember from here. Starting off with Donald Glover, Childish Gambino, the man himself as the fucking Prowler. Sony, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but I like it. Whether he's the one from the MCU or Andrew's universe or Toby's universe, we don't know. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be the one from Tom's universe, but they just can't flat out say that. It's fantastic that they keep including the man that inspired Miles Morales in the first place. Maybe in the next one, we'll get him in a Spider-Man suit as adult Miles. 
who knows? And we also got to see those cameos of Toby and Andrew, both when talking about the deaths of Captain Stacy and Uncle Ben. Pretty sure we were all expecting it, but again, they were fantastic. And next up, I'm gonna say, I'm not just surprised, I was fucking baffled by the fact that Spectacular Spider-Man had so much more weight to the story than I expected him to have. He actually had lines of dialogue. That's how much this staff cares about their fans. They know that Spectacular Spider-Man is one that everyone loves and wants to see more of, so they gave us more. I had the biggest goddamn smile on my face when his short little stature showed up and he started talking. Thumbs up all around. Yuri's PlayStation Spider-Man gets a nod, he even talks, and I'm pretty sure that in every scene, you can pretty much find a Spider-Man that you're familiar with. I love it. Again, I would say this movie was a fucking blast. It was great. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I think we pretty much know that the next movie has to start exactly where this one left off. I don't have any doubts that the movie isn't going to stick the landing because I'm pretty sure that it will. The Millers have proven themselves at what they do and this entire series is just going to turn out to be something very special in comic book fans' eyes for years to come. But with that, I think that wraps up all my thoughts on Spider-Verse. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? You love it? You hate it? Please let me know down in the comments below. I love to read your thoughts. And as always, I was Bayfond. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace.